All right. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. I also want to give double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, which do rule well through the Holy Spirit. And I want to say peace, blessings, salutations, greetings, etc. to you elect that are across the four ones of this earth, fulfilling your, lit, your uh, lot, excuse me, in all truth and all sincerity. And that remnant, all right, that believes does consist of you men, you women, and you children that do believe in the words of our testimony, which is ordained by Yahweh Shai. Now, um, just doing some thinking about a few things, and it actually was mentioned last uh, Friday afternoon at our camp, you know, and I figured, you know, I definitely would like to put this message here on wax especially since we are so very close to the end. I mean, there's so much tension in the air spiritually that you can cut it with a knife. There's always events, especially since the beginning of this year happened, there's always events that have been uh, transpiring. And again, you got this blood moon. I'm sorry, well, there has been a blood moon um, recently, and maybe last night, I think. But um, I meant to say the solar eclipse that's gonna happen on the 8th. You got this devil comment that's going to appear in the sky as well at the same moment where that um, solar eclipse is going to appear. I mean, literally, you can see clearly that the Lord is speaking. All right. He's speaking very loud and he's speaking very clear. And knowing that the Lord is speaking and knowing what he's getting ready to do to this world, we should be fervent on serving him, teaching, fulfilling our lots as much as we can, especially since we're so close to the end. You know, so when you have those thoughts of, you know, wanting to chill, you know, what I'm saying when you have those thoughts of just wanting to just, you know, do whatever. And when you know you should be serving the Lord, that should be examined. You know, when those thoughts are going to pop up, you're here in this flesh. You want to be comfortable. You know, you try to you try to get comfortable in your mind and try to, you know, try to say, oh, you know what, I, 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 I'll, I'll study this day or I'll teach that day or whatever. Well, those are opportunities right there at that moment to put something on wax. And I will say whenever those thoughts do come, <laughs> that should be that moment right there to serve the Lord. Right there at that moment where you don't feel like doing nothing. Where you feel like, you know, chilling, you know, whatever the case might be. You know, and I just caught myself meditating on that because it made mention, circling back to me bringing up Friday afternoon. It made mention that there'd be certain of those moments you know, where you want to chill, where you want to be comfortable in your flesh, where you want to chill, you know, but you got to utilize those moments and apply the spirit in those moments. And whenever those thoughts do happen, whenever you do feel like that, it's good to counterbalance that with, well, you want to be comfortable. Well, shoot, you ain't going to be comfortable generally until you do the work of the Lord. <laughs> you know, case in point, you might want to get up and, you know, you might um, have to get up and go to camp or you might have to get up and teach a class or whatever the case is. And, you know, occasionally Satan will try to creep into your mind of wanting to chill or, or wanting to pass it on to the next day. But that thought came to you at that moment right there. And when that thought comes to you and Satan tries to get up in there and get you to want to chill, that thought has to be counteracted with the spirit. You know, you got to think back like, OK, I want to chill. I want to be comfortable. Well, hey, who blessed me with the comfort? OK, let's say you want to chill and take a nap and lay down. Well, who blessed you with that bed? to take a nap in quite frankly if we wasn't doing the will of the lord we'd be jacked up in a lot of different ways so it's always good to apply what the lord has done for us before you want to get comfortable and and and, and pretty much t be off or take an off day on doing the work of the lord you got to sit back and examine yourself on you being grateful you know what i'm saying and part of the gratitude that we show is is doing lessons, doing shows, teaching. That right there outwardly shows forth the gratitude. All right? That's an action that outwardly shows forth gratitude. All right? Now, the scripture just came to mind, actually, as I was speaking. And let me pull it up real quick. And this is in the um, book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach. The fifth chapter and the seventh verse. 
And it says, make no tearing to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security that shall be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. And you got individuals that are were, that are were amongst us at a point of time and what caused them to fall out. They might have forsaken the assembly and, you know, been offended somewhere where they have forsook the assembly more to the point where they didn't want to be around the brothers. And then that segue and transpired into not really wanting to study no more and teach no more and do the work of the Lord to the point where Jake falls out, you know, and then they fall out and find comfort in the world, which the scriptures tells us in James, the fourth chapter to be not a friend of this world. So Jake will try to find certain comforts in the world to fill in for what they've been missing in this truth. And that's ultimately going to lead them to their demise and their destruction, which is why we're warned, especially in a scripture like this in Sirach chapter five, verse seven, where we're warned not to tarry, to turn to the Lord and not to put off the Lord day by day, because that this flesh will have you wanting to be comfortable. <laughs> this flesh will have you wanting to chill sometimes, but we ain't in the time of chilling. We in the time to show forth our thanks unto the Lord. It's one thing to say you're thankful. It's one thing to say you're going to do something, but it's another thing to actually do it. And we're in this flesh. So you might, you know, have something set in your mind that you want to do and you might forget whatever the case is. You know, we're in this flesh. So you're going to forget. But you don't want to get to the point when it comes to serving the Lord and you just passing by a day goes by two days goes by three days goes by and you didn't even meditate on the Lord didn't even do a lesson you know and that's the spirit that we don't want to be in and we have too many examples of our forefathers that warned us of the gravity and the weight you know the, of the gravity and the weight of what comes with not serving the Lord and we have examples in the scriptures but we're living in a time right now where those examples that we read about in the scriptures are finna become into manifest fruition very soon. You know, hey, the scriptures talks about it. The prophet Habakkuk said, oh, Lord, I've heard thy speech and was afraid. He also asked the Lord to revive his work as in the midst of the years. And those works the Lord did back in the ancient world, those works that he did terrified the nations, terrified the nations so much that they called him Alashatya, which is translated God Almighty or terrible demon like power. So this is the same God that we serve that did these events in the earth. And this same God is not a God to play with, especially since we've been given a job to do. All right. There's too many precepts and scriptures that goes into what's going to happen to a slothful servant. You have the example of the of the servant and the and the talents and the one hit his talent in a napkin and didn't flip the Lord's investment. And he got cursed out for that. And ultimately, when you read that parable again, you know, there wasn't nothing too good. It wasn't a good outcome that came from that dude. That uh, that that buried his talent in the napkin, you know, and again, as I stated earlier, what we're part of is deadly serious, very deadly serious. You know, and we need to continually to approach it as such. Now, there's a scripture that I want to bring out, and this is going to be in the book of first Corinthians, the ninth chapter in verse. Um, let's see here. Let's go straight to it in verse 16. And it says, for though I preach the gospel. I have nothing to glory of, meaning that he can't boast in the fact that he he's preaching the gospel. All right. You know, hey, we've been created. We've been formed and created to preach the gospel. It ain't like the Lord just found us worthy and righteous to just have us preach the gospel. No, we owe the Lord. All right. How was his blood? Remember that? How his blood bought us with a price and such? Well, guess what? We owe the Lord, <laughs> you know. We owe the Lord. You can't walk around with the so-called Christian's mindset. Jesus died for me so I can do anything I want to do. No, we owe the Lord. All right. We have to pay him back in something and we pay him back with our time and attention that we give to him. Now, let's continue this in first Corinthians nine and 16. And it says, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of for necessity is laid upon me. And what does that mean? It means he is completely compelled to preach the gospel. All right. It's a job that he has to do It's needful. It says for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is me. Woe is unto me if I preach not this gospel. All right. So it'll be a terrible, atrocious thing if the apostle Paul didn't preach the gospel. Literally, if he didn't preach the gospel, we would not know who we were. 
We would not know what we know. Them letters that we read, Corinthians, Thessalonians, Philippians, Colossians, etc., would not be written if the Apostle Paul wasn't compelled to preach this gospel. All right, if Yahweh Shai just wanted to chill, well, you know, I mean, the story wouldn't be the story that it is right now. If our forefathers had the same thought process, you know, that a lot of Jake has. And when I say a lot of Jake, I'm talking about Jake that's out here in the world that feel like you don't got to do too much to serve the Lord. That'll tell you it ain't about your works when the scriptures clearly tells us it is about our works. If these people have the same mindset that the forefathers that our forefathers had, we wouldn't be blessed what we've been blessed with. You know, so it's diligence that they've had through the Holy Spirit to, to compel them to want to preach this gospel and teach. And that same diligence has to be upon us. Just as the Apostle Paul was compelled to preach the gospel, knowing that if he didn't preach it, it'd be a terrible thing and it will be destruction upon him. We got to have that same mindset, knowing the gravity and the weight of what comes to preaching this gospel. This is an occupation. You look at your daily job. If you don't go to work. If you're, uh, excuse my French, but if you're a horrible worker and if you go to work and continue that horrible job, well, eventually you're going to get let go. And you got Jake at work that'll sit there knowing they're mediocre as hell, but knowing that they're mediocre just to get by. And they'll stay within that same spirit, not knowing that there's a negative light that's painted. And eventually somebody is waiting on you to slip up. That way they can get rid of you. And that's in the actual workplace. So how much more do you apply it? with this occupation of ours, with this work that we do. And these are things that have to continually be considered because we've been allotted the role of feeding the sheep. And I can actually end it off on here. Again, I didn't intend on making this lesson long. You know, it was just, it just heavy on my spirit to talk about this. And this is in the book of St. John. The 21st chapter and I'll go, you know, I'll start. I start at the point. All right. And this is after our Lord rose from the dead. This is when he ran into the disciples when they were uh, fishing and he told them to cast the net on the next side. This is after that account. This is after the apostle Peter got off that boat and swam to him in excitement to find out that that was our Lord. So they broke bread and they ate, you know, and as they was breaking bread, this is what our Lord Yahweh Shai had to say to the Apostle Peter. And this is something I know the Apostle Gabar uh, talks that he covers this often, you know, but you see the question our Lord Yahweh Shai asked Peter, as I'm going to read. And not only did he ask the question, but the question, he explained the importance of it by how many times he asked the Apostle Peter. All right. Matter of fact, this is the book of St. John, chapter 21, verse 13. And it said, Yahweh Shai then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is not a third time that Yahweh Shai showed himself to the disciples after that he was risen from the dead. All right. And when you go into um, the number three, that number is mentioned often. But when three is mentioned quite a bit in the scriptures, that that explains like a point that's being made. You know, when three is mentioned, three represents understanding. And sometimes you might not receive something if it was explained one, one, one way or done one way. And you might not receive it even the second time as much. But if it's done that third time, then you're going to have more of an understanding because of that pattern that's developed. You know, so it's a lot of or it is, there's, there's examples that I'd rather say not a lot, but there are quite a bit of examples in the scriptures where something's done three times. And those three times are meant to explain and express, I'd rather say, a point. All right. So this is the third time Yahweh Shai came and saw them after he rose from the dead. And verse 15 says, so when they had dined, Yahweh Shai saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And he said unto him, yea, Lord, knowest thou that I love thee? He saith unto him, feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verse 17. And he saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? 
And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And Yahweh shall say it unto him, feed my sheep. All right. So the apostle Peter was asked by our Lord Yahweh Shai three times to feed his lambs. And he worded them very similarly, but still expressed the same thing. And it's a reason why he asked in those three times, because, again, he wanted to stamp the importance of that in his mind, especially knowing that the apostle Peter was going to eventually become the head of the church as Yahweh Shai went back up into the heavens and currently sits on the right hand side of his father, Yahweh. So he was expressing to the apostle Peter in an important way. Look, you gonna have to feed these sheep. You love my sheep. You love me. Then feed my sheep. And he had to ask him that or tell him that I'd rather say three times. All right. Because, again, that number three, man, is something heavy about that number three, because it it manifests understanding. All right. It pretty much means understanding. It's it's the stamp of approval. All right. On a point that's being made or a pattern that's being developed. So there you can see the weight and the gravity of preaching the gospel. You can see how much it's required to the point where Yahweh Shai asked the apostle Peter three times if he loved him. And after he confirmed it, yes, he told him to feed his sheep. So this same spirit we got to keep within ourselves. And it's something that we obviously know being believers but even on those moments where you feel like chilling, even on those moments where you feel like being comfortable, everybody's not going to be a machine. Not everybody's going to do 100 videos in a week. You know, and I get that. But what your lot is and your portion, you know, best bet is to do it because it's heavily needed from the ministry and it's heavily required by Yahweh Shai. Heavily required. And with you doing that, not only are you saying you're thankful, but you're expressing that gratitude once you do that. Okay, the scriptures, the scriptures say it here in Thessalonians. Let's pull this up here. This is the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 13. And it says, but we are bound. All right. And let's go into this word bound. That word there in the Greek. Strong's G 3784. A philo. A philo. And when you go into that, it says to owe money, to be in debt. That which is due, the debt, the goodwill due. And I said earlier, we owe the Lord, bro. Yahweh Shai's blood purchased us. All right. So we owe it to the Lord to feed the sheep. We owe it to the Lord to get out of that comfort zone whenever we do feel comfortable. We owe that to the Lord. And I use the example earlier. Let's say you you got to you got you want to got to go to camp, but you want to chill, you know, which, again, granted, you know, you, hey, you had them thoughts of going to camp and wanting to chill. It, it got to be examined. You know what I'm saying? But you in this flesh. So it'll be those days once in a blue moon where, you know, it's a little gray outside. And you're like, what if it's going to rain? You know, you had that thought in your mind, like, I wonder if it's going to snow, man. I wonder if we could just be in, in the house. But whatever, man, just do the will of the Lord because you want to be comfortable. You want to lay down. You want to chill. You want to watch the movie. You want to do whatever. But the Lord blessed you and gave you all these things. You know, so it's like, why the hell would I squander the Lord's blessing and squander my duty to be comfortable when the Lord blessed me with all these things? And as the scriptures say, hey, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And we know that it's going to come to the point where all of our comforts here on this side are going to be taken away. But <laughs> one way to get used to that and to get your mindset accustomed to knowing what's getting ready to come is to sever yourself from it. You know, when I say sever yourself from it, you know, don't do it as much. Choose the Lord, study, do a lesson, do whatever you got to do. And then if you want to go out and about, you know, if you want to go to the mall or whatever, whatever, at least you did the work. You know what I'm saying? At least you did the work. But the mindset should be the work first. You know, not your job first, not rest first, not sleeping first, but the work. All right. Remember, Yahweh Shai, if anybody, if anybody wanted to rest and chill, Yahweh Shai wanted to rest and chill. But hey, he had a job he had to do. And just as he had his job that he had to do, and as he fulfilled his job and is currently still working in the heavens. And watching over us, so we got a job we got to do too. 
All right. And again, why is that? Because we are in debt. All right. We owe the Lord that much. Just as I'm reading back in Second Thessalonians 2, it says, but we are bound or we owe or in debt to give thanks always. All right. So we are bound to always give thanks. And it's one thing to say you're thankful, but it's another thing to outwardly show that you're thankful. All right. And you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy amongst amongst the body, in the body and everything like that. That's coming off as, you know, you're acting like you're thankful, but your actions are showing completely otherwise. We've seen that come and go within this truth. And you don't want to be that guy, man. You know, so hey, gratitude is an action. All right. Love is an action. Fear is an action. So you can say you can do all these things. But hey, when you don't put that action tied behind it, it don't mean shit. There's a lot of Israelites that are out here that believe they fear the Lord. They love the Lord and such, but they slander. They bear false witness. All right. Go above and beyond to be carnal. So outwardly, they're showing otherwise. And we want to make sure that we're not in that same spirit, just as the scripture says, says, but we are bound to give thanks always to the most high for you. Brethren, beloved of the Lord, because the most high hath chose you from the beginning to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. And again, that way we can share the glory of Yahweh Shai. And we should be so thankful for the fact that we are partakers in sharing this glory. All right. And again, that giving thanks is more than just saying thanks, saying the water. No, you show outwardly the water and you show that by your contribution to the truth, to the brotherhood. OK, so I'm going to end it off on that. Hopefully this was edifying. I want to give all praise, all honor and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. I also want to give double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, which do rule well through the Holy Spirit. And I want to say peace, blessings, and salutations as always until you elect to cross the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. Shalom.